Um, uh, it's a great pleasure to have the opportunity to talk about um, some new concepts of silicon-based um, water repellents or hydrophobization for cement-based sports, which is a kind of, a, of an evolution journey um, from, the, from the, the previous two years when I talked first time about it um, uh, during this conference here. So I'll jump over that one. Just a quick introduction, who is Dow Corning? Um, some people confuse that with Corning um, uh, Incorporated or Dow Chemicals. Um, we are a specialty chemical company focusing really on silicones and silicones only. And we are joint venture of these com two companies, Dow, Dow Chemicals and uh, Corning Incorporated. So keep in mind, we are not a building materials company. We are a specialty chemicals company and we try to help you to make your building materials better with the chemistry we own and with the additives we can offer to you. That's what we try to do. And with our silicon chemistry, we serve many, many industries, and one of these industries is the construction industry. So why should you um, uh, be interested in our chemistry? So the expectations from the board manufacturers and uh, especially your, your customers is, first of all, um, uh, I think the USP, the unique selling support of your board is, is its durability. It's a long-lasting product, and uh, we want to help you to make it even more durable and more long-lasting. Um, uh, so, for example, topics like dimensional stability or nicer aesthetics over a longer period of time are usually topics of concern and we try to help with this and improve the performance of your, your boards with a reduced water uptake by some additives uh, or chemistry we can offer to you, which will then help um, uh, to limit the damage caused by water such as degradation of porous materials due to microorganism growth because water is the source of any life and also grows a fungi or fouling effects. So at the end of the day, improve your durability or lower the liability claims. And also dimensional stability of your products, um, that's very often a topic of concern to customers um, in the industry using our products. And uh, thanks to the reduced water absorption, we try to help with that, um, with that issue. And also an improved water beading, especially if you sell the natural product, not decorated or uncoated, is often um, uh, something which is liked by the industry and we can help also here with the additives. Select so, like, careful, some offer it, some don't offer it, um, the way you need it. <clears throat> because we can also help with an improved durability of paints and top coats, selecting the right additives from the chemistry we, we have. So let's move on. What are the options we have to protect and, and improve the performance of a board further? Um, uh, basically, I would say there is um, different application options. So you can do post-treatment or art mixture, and I have a separate slide to explain the differences of both. There's also different technologies for the protection itself. So we can talk about mechanical or film forming protection or chemical protection with an impregnation kind of material. And I have also a separate slide on that. And then there is different materials to do these options. Um, just Bear in mind, from my perspective, there is no right and wrong for the different choices. It's just different options. And um, I would like to elaborate a bit further, um, because at the end of the day, it's, it's your choice to select what you like to do in terms of what is your objective and what do you like to achieve. So if you take a look, for example, in post-treatment versus art mixture. Um, uh, this slide tried to explain the, the, the two technologies. So post-treatment basically is one option to protect your bolts. And at the end of the day, it's, um, it's a post-applied protection onto the surface of the boards with a certain depth of penetration which the chemistry we, can, we offer can do. So it shows already you can decorate or protect boards here after they have been produced, after they are autoclave auto or air cured, and it is a protection on the surface, um, which gives you good protection, but it has also its limitations because if you later on need to cut your board to size, the edge is not protected. Or if you need to drill a hole, the hole is not protected. So in order to overcome that, in the meantime, we can do integral protection or admixture, which means, for example, for the board manufacturers, you can add the protective additive into your formulation, into your slurry, which is a challenge. Um, uh, this is only since a very few years since we can do that because there's a few challenges to overcome. So first of all, if you want to do this kind of protection with silicon chemistry, you need to pay attention which kind of materials you are using. If you use the wrong materials, if you use the wrong chemistry, you can have really an impact on other properties of the boards which you still need. 
So for example, if you use the wrong silicone chemistry, you can really impact the strength of the board. Because these silicones, they, um, they compete with the, um, with the cement during the hydration and can really reduce the strength. Only new developed special silicone chemistry, so-called resin chemistry, can really allow to not impact the strengths or only have a very, very limited impact. So that opens up and enables the admixture or integral protection technology. And the other area you also need to pay attention with is, um, ideally you want to have something which is protecting your board um, uh, very long, but is not impacting the adhesion of a top coating. So that's also something where you want to pay attention with an admixture because you never know if your customers later on want to put a top coating or a decoration um, uh, with, with, with a printing on top of that. So you need to pay attention to what you are doing there and then you can do this um, integral protection. What you already see here is with, with admixture, it, it introduces it itself. Um, uh, there's also some disadvantages or limitations. Um, you have a higher um, consumption of the, um, of the protective additive. As you can see, because your whole volume or your whole bulk is protected. The benefit of that is you can cut to size, you can drill holes, it's always protected, it works very nicely, but there is a cost to that. Now you can make easily a calculation um, uh, because it is not always more expensive because you um, uh, limit or, or you, you um, eliminate the um, post-treatment application process, which has a cost as well. So you can make an easy calculation up to a certain thickness. Admixture is even cheaper or cost neutral to post-treatment. If you go for very thick boards, then um, usually admixture is a higher quality protection, but you also need to pay the price for the additional additive. So it's not a black and white, right or wrong, it's just two different options, and you need to um, uh, take a conscious decision what is the best option for your production line, what do you like to do there. So that's one of the options you have, post-treatment or admixture. The other options is then the kind of protection you're using. The upper slide here talks about what I would call mechanical protection or film forming. The bottom section talks about this um, impregnation or chemical protection. So um, you could consider a top coating, a decorative top coating, as a kind of protection, um, uh, but it is a film forming protection which only sticks on top of the surface, very often only due to van der Waals forces. So there is a sufficient bonding energy, but much lower than having chemical bondings. And because it's only on top of the surface, if you do a scratch or if there is degradation by weather, by UV light, with micro cracks, you can still have moisture going into your surface. So there is some good parts about it, but there is also some limitations towards that. The other option you can have, or the other choice you can have, is the impregnation protection. So here you can do either surface or Admixture integral protection added into the formulation, and even if you do a post-treatment surface protection with this, with this chemistry I'm talking about, you get a certain depth of penetration, depending on the density of the board, air cured or autoclaved, and so on and so forth. It varies from one two millimeters up to four eight millimeters, depending really on the situation. But you get a certain depth of penetration. At the end of the day, after it is not only dried but cured or reacted with the surface, it is um, uh, nearly invisible, so you don't see it anymore, but it changes the surface energy and makes it from hydrophilic to hydrophobic. So it rolls the, um, the water off. There's an another interesting feature related to that. Silicones have a certain water vapor permeability, so they can let some moisture from the inside out, so they still allow some evaporation of moistures, which is um, very often a positive uh, effect there. So two choices to make. Um, I think um, uh, if you think about most of the applications of an FRC board, the impregnation is a very smart choice to take. Um, there's also limitations to the impregnation. So if you have, for example, continuous or permanent hydrostatic pressure, like in a swimming pool, I would not use the impregnation. Then I would go for a combination or at least um, uh, introduce also a film forming protection to deal with the hydrostatic pressure. But if you don't have that, in the facade, in wet rooms, where you have um, 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 uh, moisture or wet conditions, then the impregnation is very often a good choice. And at the end of the day, you can always also combine. We have in the meantime several um, uh, players in the industry who combine um, uh, the different technologies, so either integral admixture protection with a decorative top coating, or also um, surface impregnation 
with decorative top coating, just in order to have a more durable and better, better quality board, to not only rely on the top coating, which brings decoration, but can have a limited lifetime, especially if it's exposed to the weather and to UV light, have a second protection level underneath to really deal with the durability of the board, with the dimensional stability of the board um, uh, for, for, the, for the long lifetime, which is expected to be there for these kind of materials. So that is the different options on the protection technology. And then there is different materials. Like I said before, um, there is the whole arena of organics, which I skip today because that's not really my area of expertise. But there's also the silicone chemistry, which is, um, uh, which is offering different um, families of materials. So mostly we use three different families of materials in the silicone chemistry. The so-called siloxanes, the silanes, and the resins. Don't worry too much, I have one slide on all of them. There's a bit of chemistry engaged, but I try to make it as painless as possible. <coughs> I'd like to start with, with the silanes. The silanes are known in the industry, in the construction industry, since many, many years, especially for post-treatment. They are <coughs> pretty simple molecules. Um, they are by definition only one silicon atom, and then they have an organic residue and an oxyorganic residue um, to bring the hydrophobization and allow the reaction with your, with your substrates. So pretty small molecules. Um, they give you very nice depth of penetration. They are very often used uh, for post-treatment. Um, they have also limitations. Like I said before, if you choose the wrong silence, you can impact mechanical properties um, uh, with a cementitious based formulation. So you need to pay attention. But that is one uh, chemistry which can be used. One slide back. And the next one, I would like to say the next level of sophistication in silicon chemistry is what, what many people call siloxanes, or as well as silicones. It's, uh, it, it's very often uh, based on a polydimethyl siloxanes, so it is not any longer only one silicon atom, it's many SIO, SIO, two-dimensional long molecule chains. Um, uh, why should we have these materials? Um, uh, they offer you some nice features. They give you, for example, very nice beading on the surface. If you want to have high contact angle, which is very often used as a marketing effect, you can use these materials, they accumulate on the surface and give you a very nice roll of, of water. If you want to have that, very nice. You need to be careful with these products. If you want to have later on um, uh, a top coating, for example, you need to be careful and not to add too much because you can impact the adhesion of the top coating. So it's always, like I said before, no right or wrong. It's, it's only options and choices to be made there. And we want to be your consultant to help to select the right material. So nice products work for some applications very nicely, in others you try to avoid it. And then, like I said before, the latest innovation um, uh, on the chemistry side is these resins. So this is then, again, another level of sophistication. It's not any longer only two-dimensional. Now we talk about three-dimensional molecules. You see many, many silicon atoms per molecule, higher molecular weight species, cross-linked. Um, they give you a very nice, efficient reduction of water absorption and they have only a very limited or even no impact on mechanical properties. So this is the kind of chemistry which is opening up for, for admixture or integral protection into cementitious based formulations. Um, uh, very good, as I said before, efficiency of, um, of reduction of water absorption. These materials would not give you a very good depth of penetration. So this is maybe not the right chemistry for surface treatment, but for admixture, they work really very nice. So that's about the chemistry families we are using and um, maybe one additional point I'd like to make here is there's not only one silane or one siloxane or one resin, there's many different kinds. So you need to select carefully which one you are using. The next topic I would like to share with you is that the durability of that kind of protection. It's very different from organic um, uh, film forming paints like acrylic based materials. They are organic based, they have uh, a limited UV durability. These materials here, silicon based, they usually have a, um, a very good um, weather resistance and, um, uh, and UV resistance and they're also very durable because they create chemical bonding with your, with your formulation, with the cement matrix or with your, with your sand or aggregates in your boards. So that's why the protection is so durable of these materials because the level of a chemical bonding, the energy level is much much higher than the Van der Waals forces of some coatings which are only sticking on top 
of your surface, they penetrate mm -hmm. and chemically react with your material, so that's why the protection is so durable. So with that kind of chemistry, we can offer different options of the treatment. In